are you doing by the radio? I'm going to listen to the lady at the Screen Girl Show. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> I see. And, uh, why that show? Because it's like tank of coffee. And you know what? What? <laughs> I like it. Oh. <laughs> Well, come on, Snooks. You're going to have a busy Christmas day, and it's time you went to bed. Oi. Well, I should think you'd want to go to bed and rest up for tomorrow. Then you can play with your new toys all day long. Are you going to bed and rest up? Well, no. Why? Well, last Christmas you played with him more than I did. <laughs> oh, selfish. Look, will you go to bed if I sing you a song? A lullaby? Uh-huh. <laughs> Rock-a-bye, baby? Yes. I'd rather stay here. <laughs> well, you can sit by the radio all night. But they're going to tell my favorite story. Pistachio. <laughs> Pistachio? Mm-hmm. You mean Pinocchio. Pistachio is a nut. No, he ain't, Daddy. He's a little bit of boy. <laughs> the little boy's name's Pinocchio. I know the story very well. And so do I. His father carved him out of wood. Exactly. Well. And do you know his father's name? Mm-hmm. What is it? Edgar Bergen. <laughs> Just as I thought. You're bluffing. When I was your age, I knew the story of Pinocchio backwards. Did you? Yes. Now, will you go to sleep if I tell it to you? Backwards? <laughs> no, forwards. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Once upon a time, long, long ago, there was a kindly old man named Geppetto. Mm -hmm. He was a toy maker, and he lived all alone. No one to talk to but his cat and his goldfish. Did the cat really talk? Why, well, certainly. It said, meow. Hmm. What did the goldfish say? Well, uh, <laughs> uh, it, uh, it, 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 it said, uh, uh, Oh, don't be silly, Snopes. Goldfish don't talk. They just open their mouths, but never say anything. You mean like you do when Mummy's around? <laughs> when Mummy's around, I'm not a goldfish. What are you? A dead pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Daddy. Tell me more about Pistachio. Pinocchio. Well, one cold winter night, not long before Christmas... When most people were enjoying good cheer and fellowship with their families, uh -huh. old Geppetto was in his cottage all alone. Yeah. And he was feeling a bit sad. Yeah. Because he didn't have any family at all. Oh. Just his cat and his goldfish. Uh -huh. And a little wooden puppet he'd just finished carving. Yeah. So he turned to Figaro. Uh -huh. That was the name of his cat, yeah, you see. Yeah. And he said, Figaro, he is the nicest puppet I have ever seen. I think I will call him... Pinocchio. Oh, you like that name, eh? He's such a cute little fellow. He almost looks alive. Figaro, wouldn't it be nice if he were real? What is it, Figaro? What do you want? Oh, the window is open. You want me to close it, eh? Very well, I... Figaro, look, up there, the wishing star. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I make tonight. Figaro, you know what I wished. I wish that my little Pinocchio... Might be a real boy. Well, Soaks, how do you like the story so far? <laughs> I like it. What happened next? Old Geppetto went to sleep. Why? He just went to sleep, that's all. That's all? Yes. That's a very short story. Now, don't be silly. Geppetto went to sleep, and late that night, a beautiful blue light shone in through the window, mm -hmm. and it blazed and glowed. And in the middle of it stood 
the Blue Fairy. And she touched Pinocchio with her golden wand and said, Little puppet made of pine, awake. The gift of life is thine. Golly, I can move. And I can talk. Yes, Pinocchio. I have given you life. Why? Because the good Geppetto has brought so much happiness to others with his toys. And tonight he wished for a real boy. Am I a real boy? Not yet, Pinocchio. To make Geppetto's wish come true will be entirely up to you. Up to me? Yes. Prove yourself brave, truthful, and unselfish. And someday you'll be a real boy. Oh, a real boy! It will not be easy. You must learn to choose between right and wrong. Right and wrong? How will I know? Your conscience will tell you. Conscience? Where will I find one? Well, what about me? What's that? <laughs> what? It's a cricket. Jiminy Cricket, that's me. Yes, sir, we. And I'm whittle as anyone's conscience can be. <laughs> I think you would be just the one. Kneel, Sir Jiminy Cricket. I dub thee Pinocchio's conscience. Oh, gosh. Now, Pinocchio, remember, be a good boy and always let your conscience be your guide. Look, she's gone. That's right, Pinocchio. And listen to me. You and I better have a word of when we talk. Why? Well, you want to be a real boy, don't you? A wallapalooza? Oh, yes. Well, that's fine. But the world is cram full of lovely temptations. Temptations? Yep, temptations. They're the wrong things that seem white at the time, but, uh, well, even though the white things may seem wrong sometimes, they, uh, sometimes the wrong things, uh, may be white at the wrong time, uh, or vice versa. <laughs> you follow me? Uh-uh. But I'm gonna do right. a boy, Pinocchio. And I'm gonna help you. And any time you need me, just whistle. Like this. Like this? <laughs> oh, no, son. Like, well, listen. When you get in trouble and you don't know right from wrong, give it with the whistle. Give it with the whistle. When you meet temptation and the urge is very strong, give it with the whistle. Give it with the whistle. Not just a whistle squeak, hook a up and flow. And if your whistle's weak, yell, Jiminy Cricket. Take this weight and now we'll pass. And if you start to slide, give it with the whistle. Give it with the whistle. And always let your conscience be your guide. Not just a whistle squeak, hook a up and flow. If your whistle's weak, yell, Jiminy Cricket. Take this weight and now we'll pass. And if you start to slide, give it with the whistle. Give it with the whistle. And always let your conscience be your guide. Daddy. What? Yes, of course. Did the noise wake up Pinocchio? He wasn't asleep. Don't little wooden dummies sleep? Oh, sure. They sleep like logs. Ha-ha! <laughs> How's that? Ha-ha, <laughs> terrible. Hmm, what happened next? Well, Geppetto was delighted to find that his little wooden boy could walk and talk. He liked him, huh? Oh, yes. And the next morning, he sent him off to school. I thought you said he liked him. He did But he wanted Pinocchio to be like other little boys and girls So that morning Pinocchio got up and ran as fast as he could to the schoolhouse Imagine that Yes Now why aren't you as anxious to go to school as Pinocchio? Because I'm no dummy I see Well, anyway, on the way to school Pinocchio ran into a sly old wolf A wolf? Yes and you know what his name was? Uncle Louie. <laughs> no. This wolf was named Honest John. And he uh -huh. was standing on the street reading a big advertising billboard that said... Night in the big tent, the great Stromboli and his puppet show. Well, 
well, so Stromboli's in town, eh? <laughs> you old rascal, I certainly fooled him once, all right. <laughs> yes, that time I tied strings on a cat and Stromboli bought her for a puppet. Good morning, good morning, my little friend. Good morning. And where are you going this fine sunny day? I'm going to school, just like a real boy. Well, that's fine, that's fine. Just imagine, a little wooden boy. Now, who'd ever believe that mm, a wooden boy? A uh, puppet without strings. Why, why, Stromboli would give a fortune for him. He did. Hey there, wait, wait, wait for me, little boy, wait. Well, so you're going to school, my little man, going to be a scholar, eh? Yes, I'm going to learn to be brave, truthful, and unselfish, so I can be a real boy someday. Indeed, indeed. I must be going now. I'm late. Oh, just a minute, young fellow, just a minute. Haven't you ever heard of the easy road to success? The easy road? Oh, yes, I'm speaking, my boy, of the theater. The theater? Mm Mm-hmm, bright lights, music, applause, your name up in lights, uh, what is your name? Pinocchio. Mm-hmm. Why, I can see it in letters six feet high. Six feet high? Just as sure as my name is Honest John. P-I-N-U-O... P-I-N... <laughs> then we're wasting time. Come along, lad. On to the theater. I did a and acted by for me. A high silk hat and a silver cane. A watch of gold with a diamond chain. I did a little You sleep till after two. You bomb a nap with a big cigar. You tour the world in a private car. You dine on chicken and caviar. And act as I for me. Hi, little lady. Hey there. Hey, Pinocchio. Hi, Jimmy. Hey, I'm going to be an actor. Now, take it easy, son. Slow down. Remember what I said about temptation? Well, that's him. Oh, no, Jiminy. That's Mr. Honest John. Honest John. Uh-huh. Oh, please, I pray you no, Pinocchio. Come on, Jiminy. Come on. Hey. Hi, little lady. Ladies and gentlemen, from Bowie the Great, I give you now the only Papita who can sing and dance rudely without no strings. I give you the one and only Pinocchio. A gang stole me down to make me fret, to make me frown. I had strings, but now I'm free. There are no strings on me. Hi, ho, the merry I'm as happy as can be. I want the world to know nothing ever worries me. It's a great big wow of being success. Well, anyway, I did my level best, but he wouldn't listen. Ah, what does an actor want with a conscience anyway? Well, Snooks, how do you like the way I'm telling this story? I'd rather listen to the Swing Girl Show. Oh, you would? Mm Mm-hmm. And what have they got that I haven't got? Lady Esther. Uh Uh-huh. You're just like every other female. Hmm. All right, if it's Lady Esther you want, that's what you'll get. Tonight is Christmas Eve. The first really gay and light-hearted Christmas in four years. Happiness is back in millions of hearts. For once again, there's peace on earth, goodwill toward men. You can give this Christmas even greater significance. You can make it an extra special Christmas to be long remembered. The Christmas you gave yourself the gift of greater beauty. And these are no empty words. This is no meaningless promise. Lady Esther face cream 
brings you the gift of a softer, smoother skin, a younger-looking skin. And I prove it to you in just 30 seconds with the famous Lady Esther patch test. To make the test, just smooth a little Lady Esther face cream on one patch of skin like one cheek. Wipe it off. Then compare that patch of skin with the rest of your face. See how much brighter and fresher it looks. Touch it with your fingertips. Feel the difference. Now, I promise no miracles, but when you see and feel the exciting difference in your skin, I know you'll want to keep on using Lady Esther face cream forever. It so thoroughly cleans your skin, softens your skin, helps nature refine the pores, and leaves such a wonderfully smooth, flattering base for powder. All I ask is the chance to prove what I say. Let the patch test prove that the most exciting gift you can give yourself this Christmas is a jar of Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream. And now, Lady Esther presents the second act of Walt Disney's Pinocchio, starring Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks, Hanley Stafford as Daddy, Carol Smith as Pinocchio... And Arthur Q. Bryan as Jiminy Cricket. Did, Pin- Did Pinocchio like being an actor, Daddy? Oh, no, he didn't like it at all. Why? Because Stromboli soon discovered he could make a lot of money with Pinocchio. So he locked the little boy in a cage. Oh. He locked him in a cage? Oh, yes. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Poor little Pinocchio, locked up in a dirty old cage. Well, I can't help it. Take him out of the cage. <laughs> now, look, Snooks. He's in the cage because that's the way the story goes. If he wasn't in the cage, there wouldn't be any story. And you'd be up in bed asleep. Daddy. What? I'm glad he's in the cage. Oh, well, fine. Now, may I continue? Please do. Thank you. Well, just when Pinocchio had given up all hope, little Jiminy Cricket found him in the cage, and he called to the Blue Fairy. Uh-huh. And she came down yeah. and decided to give Pinocchio one more chance. Uh-huh. So she unlocked the cage, and Pinocchio and Jiminy went hurrying home. Yeah. And as they were going along the street... No, sir, nothing can stop me now, Jiminy. I'll make good this time. You better. I will. I'm going to school. That's a stuff, Pinocchio. I'll be smart, too. I'd rather be smart than be an actor. Well, 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 if it isn't my little friend, Pinocchio. Oh, it's honest, John. Tell me, Pinocchio, how do you like the great Stromboli? Oh, he's awful. He locked me in a cage. He did? Yes, and he wouldn't feed me. And he made me sing all night. Oh, then... you poor, poor boy. You must be a nervous wreck. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm Let just... me see your face. Of course, just as I thought. A slight touch of monetary complication. Do you call it semi-lunar contraption? The flying trapezius. Oh, go. Just open your mouth and say hippopotamus. Hippopotamus. <laughs> I knew it. Compound transmission to pandemonium with percussion to spasmodic disintegration. Oh, is that bad? Let me feel your pulse. Oh, my dear, oh, my goodness. Palpitating syncopation of the killer dilla with a wicky wacky stomping of the chicory chick. My boy, you are allergic. Allergic? Mm-hmm. And there's only one cure, a vacation on Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island? The happy land of carefree boys. No school, no work, just fun and noise. I'll take you there. Just wait here, my boy. I'll go and get my carriage. Jiminy, did you hear what he said? I'm going to go to play. What's the matter, Jiminy? But okay, well, don't you let him fool you. That Pleasure Island is a wacket. That's where little boys make jackasses of themselves. They do? You bet they do. Their ears get long, and then they sprout tails, and then they can't even talk. They just play. Like this. Hee-haw, hee-haw, hee-haw. Oh, golly. Let's go home. That's what I say. What's good? Hey, what do you know? It worked. Come on, Pinocchio. Let's squam. When you get in trouble and you don't know right from wrong, give it with the whistle. Give it with the whistle. And for the rest of his life, Pinocchio always remembered that song. When you get in trouble and you don't know right from wrong, Daddy, give a little whistle. Daddy. What? What? Just tell me the story. Oh. <laughs> 
I should have made you go to sleep in the first place. Uh... All right, all right, all right. When Pinocchio and Jiminy get to Geppetto's cottage, they find him out. What do they find out about him? They found out he was gone. And for heaven's sake, stop asking questions. I can't stand any more. Poor little daddy. You pester me, you interrupt me, you drive me crazy. Would you feel better if I stopped asking questions? Yes. Poor little daddy. Now sit back and listen. Jiminy and Pinocchio went looking for Geppetto. And where do you think they found him? Where? Inside a whale. Uh. Oh. Is that all you have to say? He was actually inside a great big whale. That's what I had to say. Well, isn't that remarkable? A man, a full-grown man. Isn't that an awful lot for a whale to swallow? Isn't that an awful lot for me to swallow? <laughs> well, it happens to be true. What's more, Jiminy and Pinocchio went down to the bottom of the sea and joined Geppetto inside the whale. Imagine that. But then the whale clamped his teeth, and they couldn't come out. The teeth couldn't come out? No. Pinocchio, Jiminy, and Geppetto couldn't come out. But you said that... Never mind what I said. You said the whale's teeth came out, which is false. Were they false teeth? Look, let's get out of the whale's mouth. How are we going to do it? Well, Pinocchio had an idea. He figured a way to make the whale blow them out. Do you make the whale cough? Well, that's pretty close. Mm -hmm. But how would you go about making a whale cough? Get his feet wet. <laughs> Whales don't have feet. What Pinocchio did was to build a fire in the whale's stomach. How did that make the whale blow them out? Oh, ho, ho. I guess you've never seen a whale sneeze. A whale sneeze? Yes. <laughs> but you said they didn't have legs. <laughs> oh, Snook, stop acting cute. The whale sneezed. He sneezed, you understand? A chew. Well, say something. What's your night? Snooks, I think I'm going to put you to bed. Oh, I'll be good. Tell me the rest of the story. All right. The whale sneezed them out, and old Geppetto nearly drowned. But Pinocchio came to his aid and towed him into shore. Uh -huh. In doing so, though, the little wooden boy gave up his own life to save his father's. Poor oh, pistachio. Pinocchio. And when the old man came to, he picked Pinocchio out of the water where he was lying yeah. and carried him home, mm -hmm. put him on the bed, mm -hmm. and then he kneeled by the bed and cried and oh. cried. Oh. oh, Pinocchio, oh, my boy, my brave little boy. Oh, and as he knelt there, the beautiful blue light came in through the window again. It was the blue fairy herself. And she touched Pinocchio with her golden wands. And she said, Prove yourself brave, truthful, and unselfish. And someday you'll be a real boy. Awake, Pinocchio. Awake. Oh, my poor boy. My poor boy. Father, what are you crying for? Because you are dead, Pinocchio. No, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. Now you lie down. <laughs> You're alive. Yes. And you are a real boy. <laughs> oh, Pinocchio, Pinocchio. Now all my wishes have come true. <laughs> Oh, 
that's the end of the story, Snooks. That's the story of Pinocchio. Now it's time you went to sleep. Come on, Snooks, to sleep. Snooks. Now, Snooks, I absolutely insist that you go to sleep. Oh, but Daddy, I want to sleep. You just woke me up. Oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> Thank you, Fanny Bryce, Hanley Stafford, Carol Smith, Arthur Q. Bryan, and all the rest of you who have again made this Christmas such a delightful one for so many people. Your annual performances tonight have contributed a great deal to a work that continues throughout the year, the Motion Picture Relief Fund and its country house. Thank you again. And thank you, Walt Disney. And now, here is a word from one of America's foremost beauty authorities, Lady Esther. Are you expecting a lot of pretty new things to wear this Christmas? Wouldn't you like those new things to look especially flattering on you? Well, women tell me that Lady Esther Bridal Pink Face Powder makes a big difference. They say this youthful, romantic new shade makes everything they wear look more exciting. You see, Bridal Pink is deliberately blended to flatter even a dull or sallow skin. You'll see for yourself how it gives instant new life and vitality to your entire appearance. How it gives color and tone to your skin, depth to your eyes, even a new richness to your lips. And it doesn't matter what your own coloring happens to be. You can use Lady Esther Bridal Pink whether your hair is blonde or brunette, auburn or brown. The texture of Lady Esther face powder adds glamour to your skin, too. For the instant you apply it, tiny lines and blemishes seem to vanish, completely covered. Your skin looks so much smoother, so much finer. Try this tomorrow, a real Christmas gift to yourself. First... Apply Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream. Wipe it off. Then apply Lady Esther Bridal Pink Face Powder. What a radiant new face you'll present to the world. Remember, Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream and Lady Esther Bridal Pink Face Powder. Next week, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will present Pillow to Post... It will star John Payne and Ida Lupino. Be sure to listen. The wonderful adventures of Pinocchio and the music were presented through the courtesy of Walt Disney, producer of the Technicolor musical Make Mine Music, soon to be released. Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks can be heard on our own program for Sanka Coffee with Hanley Stafford as Daddy. You save enough on the largest size jar of Lady Esther face cream to buy a box of Lady Esther face powder. So remember, ask for the largest size. Music on tonight's program was arranged and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. This is Truman Bradley speaking for Lady Esther. Good night and my best wishes for Christmas and the New Year. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 